Hello and welcome back to Kaplan USMLE Step 1 Q-Blast. I'm Dr. Jason Frenasiak again, and we are here with this week's clinical vignette. As always, we will go through these clinical vignettes focusing on the high yield topics to help you succeed on the USMLE boards and on the wards. Without further ado, let's jump right into our question. A 32-year-old woman comes to the physician because of amenorrhea for the past 15 months after delivering a baby. She says that she has also been fatigued and has gained an additional 4.5 kilograms since her baby was born. A review of her records shows that delivery was complicated by severe hemorrhage. Laboratory studies of serum show a low LH, a low estradiol, and a low thyroid-stimulating hormone. Injection of 500 micrograms of thyroid-releasing hormone fails to produce an increase in either serum TSH or prolactin. Assay of other hormones is most likely to show normal levels of which of the following? A, aldosterone, B, cortisol, C, follicle-stimulating hormone, D, gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or E, growth hormone. The correct answer here is A, aldosterone. And you might have guessed from the clinical vignette, we are dealing with Sheehan syndrome, and we're gonna go over some key points. This is a question that the boards love to ask. Hypopituitarism is due, in this case, to excessive hemorrhage and ischemia of the pituitary. Pregnancy induces pituitary enlargement, and it's very metabolically active, and thus very susceptible to hypoxemia. 30% of women who have excess hemorrhage during a vaginal delivery or parturition will have some degree of hypopituitarism. For Sheehan syndrome, it is important and a key take-home point that the most commonly impacted cells are the lactotrophs. They are at the periphery of the pituitary and are most susceptible to the hypovolemia and hypoxemia. That can result in inability to breastfeed, which is a common presentation. Hormones not controlled by the anterior pituitary function are not impacted. Aldosterone secretion is relatively independent of ACTH, and thus aldosterone was the correct answer in this vignette. High yield takeaway points here. Suspect Sheehan syndrome or a pituitary infarct in a patient with a complicated vaginal delivery with a significant hemorrhage who develops hypopituitarism. Depending on the severity, patients with Sheehan syndrome may develop a low ACTH and thus a low cortisol. Aldosterone is relatively independent of ACTH and thus is not typically impacted. Aldosterone is controlled primarily by angiotensin II and the plasma potassium levels. This is our high yield topic today. Those are some key points to increase your scores on the boards and help you take care of patients on the postpartum wards. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak, and we'll see you again real soon with another high-yield clinical vignette.